Thank you very much for inviting me and for your interest and solidarity. I'm going to be reading from a forthcoming collection of mine titled Paradise, uh, Paradise Good God, a Palestine Whale. Um, the book initially, just by way of background, had a hard time finding its way into the world after around six months with a US publisher working very closely with an editor I respected. The um, publisher got cold feet and decided that uh, for fear of offending, they couldn't support the book. Mercifully, I've uh, gotten in touch with uh, another publisher, Daraja Press, and um, it's run by a lifelong activist, Kenyan uh, author, um, Firuz Manji, and I will be reading excerpts from that. So that's my main production. I try to begin this book and end despite uh, the great calamities that are happening uh, on a note of defiant hope. The first poem is titled Hope. Hope's not quite as it seems. It's slimmer than you think and less steady on its feet. Sometimes it's out of breath, can hardly see ahead and cries itself to sleep. It may not tell you all this, or the times it cheated death, but if you knew it, you'd know how hope can keep a secret. Um, I don't know if I need to introduce all of the poems, but I may for some of them just say a word or two. Uh, I, I'm aware of the protests living in the US. I'm aware also of how the protests are received and sometimes misrepresented. And uh, this, is, this is a poem, if I could speak to those protesting and those covering the protests, what I might say. What to bring to a war protest? Bring a candle burning in your eyes to lead the way. Bring a bird nestled in your heart to set others free. Bring a shroud large enough to bury the dead past. Bring a flag spotless and white to surrender pain. Of course, one of the things one is, thank you. Thank you, I, ca I can't hear, but I can see, I can see. Um, one of the things I'm always asked uh, as, as an Arab, as a Muslim, as someone of Palestinian background, I, I might mention uh, this is personal to me because my grandmother was a Palestinian uh, educator, social worker, activist who was forced to flee her home, her ancestral home in Jerusalem at gunpoint some 80 years ago. And one of the things I find myself uh, hearing all the time is this notion of, do you denounce Hamas? Do you denounce violence? Not in your name. And of course, it goes without a given uh, that, that one is not supporting any kind of violence, especially violence that holds the Palestinian people hostage and, and doesn't improve their lives and, and help them to live with freedom and dignity. So this is my trying to imagine an alternative scenario on October the 7th. After the horrors of October 7th, the good people of Palestine rushed to the side of stricken Israelis, tending to the wounded, mourning the dead, comforting survivors. They kept vigil, praying and weeping, delivering truckloads of flowers, serving trays by day of warm meals and sweets. Palestinian families flooded the streets en masse, protesting not in our names, demanding the return of hostages. Recognizing the great need, they gifted what they too longed for, mercy, solace, solidarity. And the world witnessing never forgot, helpless, Hamas eventually surrendered. The Israeli government in turn 
relented, and the walls in hearts crumbled, then tumbled. This is titled Gaza, Capital of Hurt. Fitting that the word gauze should have ties to Gaza, a center of weaving since the 13th century. It's our turn after hundreds of years to dress Gazan wounds and wipe their tears. And here is, um, it, it's titled Open Letter to Israel. And that's, that's what it is, just an appeal to, to our shared humanity. I open it with a um, quote by Nietzsche. And the quote is, he who fights monsters should see to it that in the process, they do not become a monster. Tell me. What steel entered your heart? What fear made you rabid? What hate drove out pity? How could you forget that how we fight a battle determines who we become? When did you grow reckless with the state of your soul? We are responsible for our enemy. Compassion is to consider the role that we play in their creation. If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? Strange how one hate enables another, how they are like unconscious allies, darkly united in blocking out the light. Yes, we can lend ideas our breath, but ideals, peace, justice, freedom, require our entire lives. And all who are tormented by such ideals must learn to make an ally of humility. Truth and conscience can be like large, bothersome flies. Brush them away and they return buzzing louder. Tens of thousands slaughtered, half of whom are children, no. These are unbearable casualties to ignore, to speak nothing of the intangible casualties, damage done to our collective psyche, trust and sleep. No more nightmares, please. Give us back our dreams. We can still begin again and must. Wisdom is a return to innocence. This is um, a very short kind of blunt poem that I published recently in uh, Tifera Journal, which is uh, a journal of peace. Um, and it, it, was, it was heartening to see this poem going viral, despite how simple, like I said, it is. The title is Middle East Advice. To begin a conversation, about Palestine and Israel, first you must say, I am your brother and you are my sister. I am sorry how we wronged ourselves and the human family. Then you can speak of history and compare your losses. Finally, you must embrace in pity and be silent. This is another poem recently uh, actually read in the American Scholar uh, titled The Limits of Love. I should mention before reading this that the gamut of emotions, as you might imagine, of these poems is all over the place. Um, it was, I was writing while this genocide is being live streamed and one is trying to wrap their mind around things. So there's, there's outrage, there's, there's lament, there's pity, there's longing. Um, 
some some emotions more uh, becoming than others, but but there it is. That's part of processing uh, this this unspeakable circumstance. So again, this is titled "The Limits of Love." You're welcome to a small helping of care, a portion of our concern. Ache if you like, but don't cry on our shoulder for overlong. Please help yourself and move on. Or you may find yourself abruptly at the outskirts of compassion by the fence where barbed wire begins. There is a sign that you can't miss. Keep out, it reads in blood red. Private territory. Trespassers will be shot with indifference. The next poem is titled, Who is Innocent? If one were hard of heart, they might ask, is any Israeli innocent? In a state where military is compulsory for all, are there any citizens? Is Israel really a democracy or just another theocracy, blinded by a too literal faith? How can any freedom be built upon another's captivity? The jailer is never free. But by the same harsh logic, one must condemn every Palestinian for the stone in their hand or heart. Who is innocent since Cain took his brother Abel's life? Whoever is able can live better. In Hebrew, Cain means possessor, while Abel means empty. What does that mean today? If we have no peace, Mother Teresa reminds us, it's because we've forgotten we belong to each other. This is uh, another poem recently published um, in Tiferet, uh, the peace journal I mentioned earlier. And really it's trying to deal with, I'm, I'm sure you all have this experience with friends, uh, people that you thought uh, shared the same worldview who in the midst of, of this great moral crisis didn't respond the way we hoped they might. Uh, whether it was silence or or worse, uh, in ways that that we we, we don't have uh, an understanding for, so so it's titled "What Tragedy Teaches Us." Our friends fall into different camps: those who feel our pain as their own, without hesitation or calculation, will rush to our side, casting their lot with ours, seeking to heal. Others, tested by fire or tempted by the world, we must try to forgive. Whose tongues are tied or hands are bound by an unspeakable doubt or allegiance to another pain. At least they wish us no harm. And if they do, they do not know us or themselves well enough. Forgiveness only matters, Derrida argued, if we forgive the unforgivable. If you and I cannot remain friends because we do not see eye to eye, how can we call for peace in our world? Um, this, is, this is a poem that sort of addresses um, what is happening online. You have a lot of people online who are um, activists, possibly opportunists, possibly, or just venting sometimes without knowing exactly what they're saying or what the background might be. The title of the poem is Radical Love. Radical love understands hashtag free the hostages means 
all Palestinians living under an inhumane occupation. Hashtag stand with Israel means denouncing 700,000 Israeli settlers, since who understands better the curse of homelessness and wandering in the wilderness? Hashtag support Israel means disowning apartheid, ethnic cleansing, genocide, because we swore solemnly before as one human family, never more. Hashtag bring them home refers to the right of return for some 14 million Palestinians scattered throughout an indifferent world.